Welcome back. As parents, we all want to protect our children from ugly realities. An award-winning author and educator, Dr. Jennifer Harvey, says now is the time to teach rather than shield. She is the author of Raising White Kids, Bringing Up Children in Racially Unjust America. Dr. Jennifer Harvey joins us live now. Doctor, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having this important conversation. Now, Dr. Harvey is an award-winning author, educator, and public speaker. Doctor, your work has focused primarily on racial justice, and white anti-racism. What is the conversation we should be having with our children right now? Well, I believe that those of us raising white children need to be talking to our children honestly about the legacies of police brutality against black people in this country and the ways that black people have been organizing for decades to try and get justice and to make such violence stop looks different with different ages, but we need to be having frank and honest conversations with them about what's going on and why it's happening. So my daughter is three and a half and I watch her. I know she's colorblind when it comes to race. I see the dolls she plays with. Uh, for her birthday, she dressed up as Princess Tiana. Uh, how do we keep that colorblind going? Uh, she's three and a half. Do I have a conversation with her at this age? So you might be surprised. Your daughter probably is not actually colorblind, even though it may appear that way to you as an adult. Um, we have countless studies that show by the ages of two, three, and four, children not only recognize difference, but by four, they're starting to notice the way differences play out in society. And so I would actually say you don't want to try and keep her colorblind. What you want to do is value and acknowledge and talk about difference with her mm -hmm. so that as she becomes more aware of racial injustice, which is also important we, we, that we are teaching our children about those realities, that she can be brought on board in the struggle for racial justice and the flourishing of all of us. So I would encourage you to name difference with her because in fact, it might look like colorblindness to you, but no study backs up that even three-year-olds are actually colorblind. That is so good to know. So you say it's never too early to have that conversation about race. What does that conversation look like? Well, with very, very young children, and this is especially where re I'm really talking about white families because black families are always having this conversation and have for generations because they have needed to for their children's survival. So in white families, or those of us parenting white children, young, it's talks, it looks like just noticing difference, naming it, talking about it, talking about skin tones, using the language of African-American and white and uh, lat Latino and Latina, um, and as if because we want our kids to know that's a normal, good thing to do. And then very early, we start involving them as we go in spaces where people are working for racial justice. We need to bring them into that work, even if their language doesn't yet know what, how mm -hmm. to understand what's going on, so that we early help them understand that like African-American families, like Latinx families, they too can be part of creating a more racially just America. We need everybody in this struggle, and white children in particular, who are not getting that right now, those of us who are parents can give it to them and we have a moral responsibility to do so, and we can. So I'm doing something right because I have taught her to say I am Latina. She knows that. She says I am Latina. So you say it's our moral responsibility to raise a generation of anti-racist children, committed white children, and we uh, basically, you say commit to this. We can. We can. We can. I mean, for those of us that are white, it's, it's, a, it's a pivot because mm -hmm. most of us were raised if not in explicitly racist households, right, where we were taught that, we were raised being told, well, we're all equal and we don't really need to see difference. And so we've got to interrupt and radically relearn a language that was not generally taught to us. But if we start to do it, we realize, oh, part of learning to do it is just doing it. Um, when I make mistakes, I can correct them. I can revisit with my child. I can come back to it. And there's all kinds of resources out there. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, we can do it. We can change the way our children experience and understand race so that my kids are doing now what I didn't learn to do until my 20s. And your book addresses that. It does address that in some very concrete, specific ways, talking about race, talking about racism, and talking about and modeling anti-racism. So if people who are watching our show want to start somewhere, they can just pick up your book, right? I think that would be a great place to start. There's also incredible African-American authors who have written about this, Ijoma Oluo, her book, So You Want to Talk About Race, is a great one for adults. And Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum has been re writing about this for decades. Her book, Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria, is a must read for all parents of white kids as well. You've really focused your life's work on this. You've been doing this for about t more than 20 years, you said. I have. 
Yes, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Jennifer Harvey, for joining us uh, this morning, for having this very important conversation that we need to continue to have. Thank you so much for making time. Of course, of course, thank you so much.